Welcome to Strider Trees. Today I'm going to be demonstrating how to properly set up a porter wrap. It's a real handy little device to keep you from tearing up your ropes on the trunk of a tree, taking wraps around the tree. And instead you can wrap around this little metal bollard and it makes for lowering, uh, much, lowering heavy weights much more smooth and consistent and reliable. So I hope you find this useful. Check it out. So the Porter app is a frequently used tool here in the tree industry. Um, it makes a, it's allowed us to use double braid ropes without tearing them up against the trunk of the tree. Uh, it's, it's designed to be used in conjunction with a block or a rigging ring setup in order to allow for a more smooth and more predictable friction. Because very often when we're taking chunks that we're rigging, uh, big pieces, whether it's negative or, or standard rigging, um, it's important to know how much friction you have in your system in order to allow things to run and to minimize the load forces both on our tying points and on all the hardware involved. So the Porter app is a big step up from just using a rope. So I'm going to show how to set it up properly. Um, this is a large Porter app. I think there's one, there's some, a few different brands, there's other ways to do it. Um, there, there's other devices that perform similarly, but this one's fairly standard and everyone should have one. First off, you want to make sure that the eye of your sling, in this case I have a, an actual eye that's been spliced in here, but if you don't have an eye, you can uh, tie a bow in or some sort. But you want to make sure the eye is tied around the long portion of this uh, part of the device. Uh, this is this kink side and there's a long side. You want the eye on the long side pass it around the tree and I'm going to try to line myself up with wherever my rope is coming down and be aware of my body positioning when I'm using this that I can stand out of the way of any pieces coming down as well. So I'm going to wrap the tail end of my sling around uh, the eye portion and I'm going to try to choke this down because really I want this piece I want this to be snug. Um, it's, if this is flopping around a lot, it makes it difficult to use properly. And I'll demonstrate uh, how we take tension here. It's called sweating the line. But it's difficult to sweat the line effectively without this being fairly snug to the tree. So pass your rope around, and now we're tying the timber hitch, which basically just consists of wrapping the slack around the rope a number of times, probably five, six times is appropriate. If I had enough slack in this rope, I would go all the way around, wrap it, wrap it around the device again, repeat it, and then wrap the other way, but I don't have enough slack. So all I gotta do is take some twists. This is four, five, and each one of these I, I do, I actually snug down the whole system a little bit more and make it a little bit tighter. So there's a wrapped timber hitch. It's not going anywhere. This thing is nice and snug. It's got some movement up and down, which you can't avoid having, but it's not, there's not a lot of play. And it's not real loose. It's gonna make that more effect, effective. Now, I've got my rope here trapped on this, but it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna pretend that that's the side that's hooked up over there. Sorry to interrupt, but if you enjoy my content in this channel and you're looking at diving deeper into tree work, check out stridertrees.com. I've got a course for the beginner who's just looking at getting into the trees for the first time. And I've also got a series that's more tilted towards folks who are already doing residential tree work. Uh, it's going to have the safety trainings and the skill trainings starting at new hire to take someone right off the street, make them an apprentice, teach them the more advanced skills all the way to a foreman. Uh, and if that's something you'd be interested in, you can leave your email address there on the website and I'll uh, let you guys know first thing when that's available. Also, you can schedule to have me come out to your job site and be a contract climber and an instructor and combine that time uh, to offer you the best value to upgrade your skills with your crew on your job. So you can do that, you can schedule that on my website as well, stridertrees.com. Now, back to the goods. When you're using the Porter app, you wanna start with it up. So the climber will yell down, 
hey, take a wrap, take two wraps, um, or whatever the need arises. And this is how you would do that. Here we've got the bent part of the porter wrap. You're gonna take a bite of the rope, push it through the bent part, and around the little nub on the bottom. If you'll notice, that makes a nice smooth bend in the rope. So this would be a half a wrap. The climber says, hey, take a half a wrap. That's all that's necessary. Take a whole wrap. I'm gonna take my slack and wrap it one whole time around. That will be one wrap. This would be two wraps. This would be three wraps. Generally, you would not be use more than three wraps unless you're planning on locking it off. If you've got a piece and you not need to take three wraps on it, there's a good chance you are exceeding the 2,000 pound working load limit of this device uh, if you need more than three wraps to, to slowly control it. Now, uh, a lot of times, once he's tied on, I've got a starting of a wrap, he'll say, well, take tension, take the slack out. And that's where we'll use this technique called sweating the line. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull midline here real hard while I'm applying some tension on, with my right hand. And I'll pull real tight, real tight, and then I've, I'm gonna take the slack out with my other hand. So as I come in, I'm pulling up with my right hand and then I'll wrap it and capture that slack. And if that's not enough, I'll do it again. Sometimes I'll leave my one wrap. I'll pull, 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 and then take the tension out with my other hand as I'm releasing that bow and arrow vectored force that I've used to take tension. Pull, 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 cinch it down. Take, now I've got two wraps. So that would be a tensioned two wrap uh, set up here. Now before the climber makes the cut, it's important that you verify with him that one, you've got enough friction for the piece he's putting on. You wanna look for yourself and see, okay, based on the previous pick or based on your other experience, you know, do you think you've got enough friction? And then last of all, before he makes that cut, you wanna make sure that your slack, that you've got plenty of slack behind you you don't want it coming from over there. If the slack is coming from over there, when the rope pulls through your hands, it's gonna use your hand as a friction point and heat it up really bad. So you want the slack behind you, you wanna make sure your legs are clear, and you wanna make sure you are standing clear of whatever's coming down. Once all that is set and you're ready to take the, take the, the piece, then I'll yell, okay, ready, or clear, or send it, uh, but you wanna make sure that they know that you're prepared. Uh, you also make a note, you don't want to stand right here next to the porter wrap. It's a, a body's natural instinct when things are going scary is to hold on. And if you're standing right next to this and you hold on and it's a heavy piece, it's really easy to get your knuckles sucked up into the porter wrap, even have it half wrapped around and that can get messy and uncomfortable very quickly. So you want to make sure you stand back a little bit because now if I panic and grab on, I'm just gonna get dragged and I'll have a moment to think about and let go of the rope. So there's your basic use of the Porter Wrap. Um, it's a great tool, it's super handy, and it can make rigging pieces much safer than the old school method of just taking wraps around the tree. Highly recommend it. If you don't have any other rigging devices like a GRCS or or these other complicated billards, uh, this will get you a long way.